In this video, I'm going to do example two in tutorial 10 again, since I didn't cover it in my last tutorial, and some of the people were really lost during the tutorial. So let's go over it again. First of all, I'm going to talk about the thinking process, and then we'll move on to the proof. So the question says, prove that if f mapping from A to B is surjective, well, surjective here is a keyword. It means that, well, if I have my domain and codomain, so let's draw something as a demonstration. And my map, this is my domain. This is my codomain. And the mapping is surjective. So let's have a surjective map in some way. Okay, so this is a surjective map. They said, well, if I have F mapping from A to B, so this is A, this is my B, then there must exist a subset of A such that the cardinalities are the same. I hope this whole thing would make sense to you because, well, if it's surjective, then you would know that Oops, let me change the color. If it's surjective, you would know that all well, the cardinality of A must be bigger than or equal to cardinality of B. So part of A, for example, um, this part, okay, part of A must have the same cardinality of B, so which makes sense. But the thing is, how do we find this set C? Okay, the key here is well, first of all, you know that to prove two sets have the same cardinality, we need a bijection. So this is telling you, well, I need a bijection from C to B. Right. Now, since I need a bijection, that means for every element in B here, I can only have one element mapped to each one of them. But right now, if you look up here, I, this one has two things mapped to it. This one has two things mapped to it. This one has only one thing. So to have a bijection, what I need to do is basically for each element in the codomain, I only want one element mapped to it. So for example, let me use another color here. Let me use red color, okay? So for example, this one, I'm only gonna pick this one that map to it. So this is, this element is gonna be part of my C. And for this element, there are two things mapped to it. So I'm only gonna pick one of it. So let's pick this one. Okay, so this one is mapping to this one. So I only pick this. And for this element, there are two elements mapped to it. So let's only pick one as well. Let's pick this one. And, uh, oops, seems like I picked the wrong one uh, because this one is now uh, mapping to this. Um, let me fix this. So this one's not even mapping to the second element here. So I need to pick one of those two. So let's pick this one. And this is mapping to this element. So the three elements in A that I circled, I would put them in my C. Them together would form a bijection to be using the same F. What I did is basically restrict the domain. So your proof is pretty much the same. What we need to do is for each element in B, because it's surjective, we know something mapped to it. So let's look at whatever is mapping to this. So for this one, for example, will be those two. And from those two, we just pick one of them, put it in my set C, and so on. So that is a whole thing. So now we can um, start writing our proof down. Let's use a different color. Okay, so now proof. Okay. Um, since it's by it's surjective, I can always pick for every element here, there is always something up to us. So let's use that property. So uh, for all 
or for every B in B. Okay, I can consider the set. Let's call it A, B, which is A in A. Okay, so this set will be, well, it's an element in A, and it has a restriction that f of a must map to b. When I did the tutorial, some people did not understand this. So let me use the above demonstration to show what this even mean. Okay, so let me give them a name. Let's call this one, two, three, four, and five. Let's call this alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay, so the first sentence for every B and B, so let's pick an element, let's say al uh, alpha. So let's say alpha for alpha in B, okay? Consider the set A, B, so consider the set A alpha. A alpha is gonna be whatever is in A such that they map to alpha. So in this case, it will be three and five. So based on my definition of A, B, my A alpha is gonna be three, five. And my A beta is gonna be whatever is mapping to us, so that's gonna be two, four. And my A, oops, did I write alpha twice? And my A gamma, sorry, my A gamma, is gonna be one. Okay, so that's my first sentence. The whole thing here, that's, that's what we're doing. I need to do it again, oh my God. How can I, can I even save this? Don't really know how to do it. Oh, whatever. Let's add a pencil with this color. Oh, nice, there we go. Okay, so that's my first thing to do. And now, as I mentioned, uh, after I picked all my sets, so now I wanna pick one element from each of the sets. But before I do that, I wanna make sure every single such set, they are now empty and they are now empty. Why? Because, well, it's surjective, right? So since, F is surjective. We know that we know that uh, A B is not empty for all B and B. Okay. Well, now we know it's not empty, so we can always pick element from them. So let's let X be. Okay, choose one element XB from AB. So I'm picking one element there. And set C, so now I'm gonna define my C. The C is gonna be XB, where B is in B. So using my above demonstration to show you what, what we're doing here, is saying, well, well, I'm going to pick one element from here. So pick one element, let's say it's three. Okay, and I'm going to put it in C. Pick one element from here, doesn't matter which one, let's say if I pick four, then I'm going to put it here. Pick one element from here, I can only pick one, so I'm going to put it here. So this is my subset of A, which is C. And in this case, it's going to have the same cardinality of my B. So um, set C, B, thus, then F mapping from C to B is a bijection. Okay, and now 
why is it by adjective? Thus, you should be able to see it. Well, it's surjective because the original function is surjective already. So let's show injectivity. I'll quickly go over this. Injectivity, it's injective. F is injective. Because XB is unique. Right, I'm, I'm not going to have two different elements from two different sets, okay? Because well, you, you're not going to have the same element in two different sets. That's by the definition of function. You cannot have one element map to two, two different sets. So it has to be unique. And search activity, because well, the original function is search active. B equals to B for every B in B. Okay, this is not a really a formal proof here. I don't want to give you a formal proof because this question is quite similar to your formal question. <laughs> so this is not formal. You should try to um, make it formal, okay? And because, well, I have a bijection, that means you have the same cardinal here. Is bijective um, C and B have the same cardinality. Okay, so that is the whole question. Remember, this part is just as a demonstration, it's not part of the proof. This part is a proof. Okay, only the green part. <laughs>